Well, this is a topic that's near and dear to my heart. And uh, I've taken this to heart all the way back to when I was 15 years old and shot my first deer. And I had a really good teacher on how to track deer. And uh, that person taught me a lot about being very patient. And, uh, you know, along with looking under leaves for blood and being very meticulous and methodical, looking for that next pinpoint blood, not going too far past your, la your last blood, making sure that you're not wiping away blood by walking all over, by not taking too many people out in the woods, at least keeping them back uh, behind that last blood, only fanning out when you just simply lose the blood trail. So I had a lot of good tips right off the bat, but patience was critical. We're down here in Kentucky right now, and... We're hunting um, Salt River Outfitters. I hunted here last year, shot a nice buck, and uh, went turkey hunting in the spring here, getting to know this place a little bit. I like it a lot. We were hoping to shoot some tonight because then we could have showed you blood tracking in person and what we're doing. And uh, you have to shoot some of the stuff in the background. We have guys coming in and out hunting. Um, it's uh, one of those nights and we can't wait to go eat some dinner, but I wanted to show you some blood tracking in person and hopefully we'll do that um, throughout this week. But this is an important video, I wanted to get it out. And when it comes to recovering deer, I think that you can go through a lifetime of shooting deer and by making smart decisions at the shot, you're gonna lose very few deer, if any at all, depending on how much you shoot. Um, patience, number one, patience is key it is critical the decisions you make right after you make the shot are so important and with being patient uh, number one being patient means when you shoot that deer of course you want to see which way it's going you want to make a, a mental note of exactly where that arrow hit but what I like to do is you really assess can that deer see you for one can that deer see you climb down the tree and get out can that deer see you uh, walk over to where you shot that arrow? If you think that deer is watching you or can hear you, then it's good to wait at least an hour in the tree stand. And you're not waiting for the deer to die necessarily, you're waiting for that deer to settle down so that your intrusion for going to look at that arrow, making that noise, is not going to spook that deer. So that is, that is really critical. Think of it that that deer is wounded, doesn't know what happened. It's waiting out there, it could hear you, see you, and if it does, now it knows what happened. And that leads into number two. And what I like to do actually a lot of times is when I have that deer and I'm not sure that hit, then I actually wait an hour, sometimes two. I get down out of the stand and I actually walk directly away from where the deer went, circle around and get out of there. And that's very critical because point number two, when you spook a deer, you know, when you shoot it, they feel sick, they feel hurt. You know, hopefully you made a great shot. It's only going 100 yards away, 200 yards away. But when you spook that deer, at that point, when you walk in the woods, it hears you, sees you, smells you. It's just a wounded deer. It doesn't know what's going on. Probably very confused. But when you spook it, it's a half mile, half mile three quarters of a mile, sometimes a mile in open cover, and it's gone if you had a marginal hit. And that's the problem with most losses when it comes to deer, is that you're not patient enough. That deer knows you're tracking it, and it just doesn't run 100 yards and turn around and look back, unless it's really mortally hurt. And then in that case, you're probably not gonna lose it. But what it does do is it runs a half mile and then stops. It runs three quarters of a mile. If I was in open timber, like in Pennsylvania, where I go hunting on public land every year for gun season, open timber where you can get 250 yards, 300 yard shots through the timber, it's just big mature timber, that deer could run a mile. And then when it runs a mile and you have a marginal hit, you're not gonna get a lot of blood. So think about that. When you're jumping that deer, it's going a long ways. Think about that as it relates to those decisions of being patient, giving that deer time to expire. Number three, that leads me to rain and snow. A lot of people say, oh, I gotta get on that deer because it's gonna the rain's coming, it's gonna snow. I'll tell you what, what I find is when you don't spook that deer, here's the good thing. It goes about two, three hundred yards to the first patch of cover, the first bench in hill country, first thick cover, and it holds and it dies there very critical so if it's raining if it's snowing and you have a bad hit and you go track that deer prematurely you're pushing it three quarters of a mile a mile you're not going to find it at all that's that's the bottom line you're not going to find that deer and especially if it's raining or snowing and it's going to half a mile three quarters of a mile a mile away you're not going to find that deer but you do have a chance of recovering that deer if it goes 200 yards you have a gut shot it takes five hours to die you give it the time to expire, you allow it to die, 
you have a direction it went, you're looking for that first patch of cover within 200, 250 yards, and you will find that deer. Again, if you push it, start looking out a half mile. You can even just start there. A lot of times people are spending so much time agonizing at 300 yards, 400 yards, 500 yards into the search, when they pushed it at 200 yards, and they need to start at 800 yards away, 1,000 yards, because that's how far that deer is going to go before it lays up again and actually dies. Number four, something that is really important to think about, I was misled a long time ago because someone would say, okay, with a heart shot, it, a deer goes 150 yards, 200 yards. With a lung shot, 200 yards. If you hit him in the guts, it might go a half mile. Don't think about how far the deer will go after the shot based on the shot location. Think about it as in time to expire based on shot location. For example, heart lungs, it's gonna die within eight to 10 seconds, six seconds, very, very fast. It's just going, piling up and it's dead. That's perfect. Upper liver shot, middle shot, a lot of times 45 minutes to an hour. And unfortunately I know this by experience. Gut shot where you actually have food on the arrow shaft, little bits of food and pieces and it's stinky, green slime, whatever it might be. That's more like five hours. Lower liver shot, right behind the heart, it's unfortunate because it looks like you got a great hit. The problem is, is that it takes sometimes 24 hours, 36 hours to die, and you're just two inches behind the heart, three inches behind it. Look like that great shot. So you have to be very careful that it's going to take a long time. And an intestine shot, same thing. It could take a day and a half to die, a day. It takes a long time. Think about that as in location is shot, how many hours it takes to die, not distance, because distance will be determined by you. And that brings up number five again, exercising patience. If you exercise the appropriate amount of patience for the type of shot that you have, then that deer is not going to go very far. It's going to go to that first patch of cover. You're going to give it the appropriate amount of time to expire. You know, obviously, you want to be able to analyze the arrow. You want to be able to analyze those first few drops of blood. You have to make a very smart decision at that point of exactly what that shot was. Hopefully you saw your shot, maybe it's on film or something, and you have that perfect shot. But it all boils back down to patience. Meaning, most deer are lost. Now obviously there's deer that recover and that's a great thing. That's a really good thing. I had a deer last year. It ducked the arrow. I was aiming probably too high to begin with. I hit it up top. Three months later we see it during the winter time doing just fine. A month later we saw it. That's the kind of wound if you have one at all that's what you're hoping for but you have bad shots they go die if you give it the appropriate amount of time that deer is only going to go two three four hundred yards going to that first patch of cover and because you exercise patience it'll still be there when you go to look for it that's why it's so important to sneak out of the stand make sure you're not spooking how many deer have been spooked some will say well i never saw it bed down it's because you never gave it time to bed down and a lot of times when it does bed down, you might not even notice it at bed down. You're excited, you're looking for deer, you're going through thick brush. You say, well, it didn't bed down, it didn't bed down in the first 100 yards, it didn't bed down in the first 200 yards. It probably did, and if it didn't, it's probably because you pushed it. And again, if you pushed it in that first one or 200 yards, it's going to be long gone. It's going to be a very, very long, difficult job. And I'll bring up a point number six, and we talk about being patient at number one making sure that you're looking at location of shot, determining time to wait, not necessarily a distance. You're making smart decisions for sneaking out of the stand, carefully analyzing your arrow after you've given it time. Really never give up. If you have some blood, just keep going, keep going the direction. It's amazing how when you have a direction that a deer was going, if you follow that direction, if you think like a deer, think about a wounded animal. They're, they're thinking related to stress, meaning that if they're gonna go through an open yard in someone's backyard or be exposed to a road, human traffic, they're going to take the path that's a little bit thicker. And that's why it's so important, and Dylan brought this up, to where you're marking it, whether you're leaving toilet paper, you're leaving something, so you have that direction, you can look back, you can have a great direction of travel of where that deer actually went. And then in the end, with a deer that you have to leave overnight, I always, Try to get to that point where I think I can leave that deer, it's not gonna see me, not gonna hear me, not gonna smell me, and I leave a hat, 
I leave a jacket, I leave something of some kind of scent on the ground so that any kind of coyotes or predators around will get my scent along with that deer. Most of the time when they get your scent, they're going to leave. That'll help you recover a lot of deer, even in coyote country. But again, the saying is so true. When in doubt, back out. And when you don't, again, if you push that deer, it doesn't matter if it's raining, snowing, if there's predators, once you push three quarters of a mile, mile, half mile, you're just giving in to the elements, giving in to the predators. They're gonna find that deer. You're not gonna recover it because of the elements. So be patient, be patient, be patient. And you'll find your deer the vast majority of the time, if not all the time. It's not uncommon to shoot 100 deer and have one or two losses at the most during that entire time frame. It all goes back to being patient and making sure that you're making smart decisions at the shot and you'll recover your deer for the rest of your life.